everybody, it's Lauren from Pink Bird Originals and this video is going to be all about my one month user experience using my Canon Pixima 200 for starting up a home card making business. So I've owned this printer for a month and overall I'm really happy with it and I would recommend it. But there are a few um, issues and drawbacks with it that I will be discussing in this video. Firstly, why I went for the Pixima Pro 200 over every other printer out there. Uh, I'm an avid holder of technology and gadgets and I always like to try and get the best for my money. And like I said before on this channel, I make the mistakes so you don't have to. And so the long and short of it is, after doing a lot of research, I ended up settling on this printer. I think it cost me £450, which is it so it's about a mid-range printer. You it's like cheaper obviously than the very expensive, very high-end ones, and it's better than some of the cheaper competitors. One of the two things that stand out about this printer is it's got eight inks. They aren't pigment inks, but there is eight of them, which means you'll get a variety of shades and tones in your images. So if you're trying to print out photo quality images for professional photography, you'll get a lot more depth and detail in those images, whereas you wouldn't get as much detail if you say went for like an Epson Eco Tank or something similar, which has fewer inks. Uh, the other great thing about this printer is it is an A3 plus. So you're not limited to small A4 prints and you're not limited to A3 prints. You can actually print a little larger than A3, which will give you some nice borderless prints. It's also a back... Here's a hard word for me to say. It's a back fed printer. So the sheets come from the back through rather than from the bottom up bending and coming back out. So because of that, I actually think you can print longer than A3 size. You can't go wider, but you can go longer. I haven't tried that feature yet, but I will do in the future. The printer is also capable of printing on cardstock, which I've done quite a few times now. And apparently it's capable of printing on things like canvas as well, which is a really exciting thing because first and foremost, I am an embroidery business, so I've got big ideas of printing on canvases and then stitching lovely flowers and things over those canvases on my embroidery machines. But again, that's a project for another video. Another really cool benefit to this printer, which I think I never really thought of until I actually bought it, but now that I have bought it, I'm like, oh, thank God, it's got this. All of the inks are individual, so each colour has its own dedicated cartridge which is a benefit because I know on a lot of printers, if for instance, your black runs out, you have to buy the whole color packet, including like uh, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Is it just called yellow? You have to buy them all as one pack and that can sometimes cost you like 60 pounds when you only really need one ink. This printer, you can buy the inks individually. So at the minute, I'm burning through a lot of black and if my black runs out, but all the other colors are still quite full, I can just buy that black ink for 18 pounds. So the inks are quite pricey. I think if you do buy them as a bundle, there's something like uh, 128 pounds for the full set of inks. But then going forward, if you run out of just one, you can just pay 18 pounds and have that individual ink that you actually need which is a good thing so you're not shelling out £128 every time you do it and I'm really glad that that is not the case. Those are all of the physical positives that I can think of for buying this printer. My last video about this printer was an unboxing video, I'll put the link for that down in the description below and this video is going to go over other things that I haven't covered in that unboxing set of video. There were other things involved in the setup which I didn't know about at the time but now I do so I'm going to talk about them in this video. Getting my image colours and quality right wasn't as plain sailing as I made it appear in that unboxing and setting up video. In that video, I used the premium photo quality paper that came with the printer that you can use to run out a few samples as you're setting up the printer. And the results were amazing. I actually have them here. 
So first of all, I printed out an image on plain paper, which is this one. And as you can see, it's quite washed out, quite kind of, uh, kind of dull compared to this print, which is on the glossy paper. And this is the premium photo quality paper. Um, I use the same settings on both images. So the ink actually came out really thick and heavy on the regular plain paper when it shouldn't have really. So the printer defaults to the premium photo quality settings and then it printed out like loads and loads of ink on this uh, really light paper which wasn't prepared to handle that much ink. Um, but it made for a good test because I could use the same settings then on this plain paper and on this good glossy uh, photo image and you can see that it's really nice quality there's no lines or streaks or anything going to it going through it uh, i can't see any like pixels or anything so when this printed out i was really happy with the quality and it also showed that the printer worked well and that was about where my luck ended Every other image I tried to print out on card after that was dull and miserable and it really broke my heart because I ended up spending nearly as much on different kind of papers as I did on the printer itself. Or at least definitely as much as I spent on the inks. Well, I want to be absolutely clear, there are special inkjet cards out there and these cards will give you the vibrant colours that you're looking for when you're printing out greetings cards or artistic prints. Um, the issue is, on the websites, they don't always make it incredibly clear that the card is inkjet friendly. I just purchased some regular greetings cards off eBay and the result of those greetings cards was, um, well, it was very similar to this. Like, as you can see, the colours are all dull, they're not vibrant, this isn't what I wanted. For greetings cards, um, they recommend you use something that is between 260 uh, GMS and 300 GMS. So I went out and I purchased cards that were of this thickness, and that's what this is here. But while the card is great, it's a nice thick card, and I'd be happy to use these as backing cards for my pins. Um, the print quality is really dull and I was in despair because after playing around with the different settings on the printer and the laptop like using photo quality, using semi-gloss quality, just trying plain paper and so on, I was still getting the exact same results. But because I had this image like my control image as you do in all sorts of experiments, I knew the printer was capable of printing these fine quality images and so it was me and something I was doing wrong. Eventually I did find a supplier of um, a card that is dedicated to inkjet printers and I purchased this semi-gloss uh, 300 gram card and I'm not sure if the camera's showing it, I'm moving it around to try and catch the light but it is semi-gloss and, and it gives the cards a lovely professional finish, uh, which I'm gonna show now when I print out an image. So once I figured out that the vibrancy issue was an issue to do with the card and not the printer itself, the next thing I needed to overcome is how to print out an image without leaving some kind of white border around the edge of the card. This axolotl print isn't the best to demonstrate this issue, but this is the card I need to make. So this is the one I'm using for my demonstration. To get borderless prints, I had to download Canon's specific software called Professional Print and Layout. I'm sure there probably is a way of doing this in Photoshop, but it wasn't easy to figure out. So it was much quicker for me to just download the software, upload my image into the uh, Professional Print and Layout software, and as you can see here on the right hand side of the screen, uh, you can choose your media type and then you can also make some minor adjustments to your image like the brightness and contrast by just sliding the sliders. You can choose the appropriate paper size in this software and then right underneath that is the option to select borderless printing. And what this does is when you hit print, it prints a little bit further around the edge of the paper as you can see by the sort of shadowy gray line around the preview box it's like a little bleed area and that is what gives you your borderless prints so when i put the glossy paper into the printer is facing towards me another criticism i have of this printer is 
obviously it's a fine quality printer so i knew it was going to take a little longer to print out stuff but it is exceedingly slow so as you can see now i'm printing this out in real time this is how long it takes to print one card with i'd say not that much detail in it because the majority of the image is white um I wouldn't say the physical connection made any difference to speed um, because first of all I thought with the Wi-Fi obviously the laptop has to send it to your router and then back to the printer and so it takes longer for that signal to get transmitted and like with a, a solid connection but that hasn't really made much of a difference um, so speed has been a little bit of a letdown I don't exactly know how this is gonna impact my profits in the long run because that's the main thing I'm interested in with doing this is making profit but I guess slow and steady wins the race because the quality on these is so good like I can see it printed out now and I'm actually getting excited because it just looks so pretty here it is this is my first official card order I had uh, one going to like a friend so I mean Yes, it was an order, but it doesn't really count. But this is my first official card order from a stranger and it's going to somebody in the US. Um, card is nice and straight and well aligned. The image fits the card really well. I've got my details on the back there, just in case the recipient wants to you know, check out my store for anything else. Yeah. But on the whole, I think that covers everything I want to say about this printer and oh. you don't like it yet. <laughs> but on the whole, I think that covers everything I want to say about this printer and my user experience of it so far, mm. one month after purchasing. The positives being the individual inks, the A3 Plus printing, the really high photo quality. Um, bye. And the only significant drawback being uh, the price on the inks is obviously expensive but at least they are in individual cartridges and to be honest inks are expensive anyway. Um, in my previous printer I did use uh, third party inks that were much cheaper and I think that might have contributed to damage in the printer, I don't know for certain but I won't be using any kind of third party inks in this, I'm going to buy the, uh, the official Canon inks for it because it's too expensive an investment to mess around with with cheaper inks um, and the only other drawback, the biggest drawback for me is the speed it prints at. Um, I could potentially get it to print a bit quicker if maybe I didn't print it on the high quality images set in. I did do that once and I didn't notice a significant difference but again I'm still learning how to use this machine and these are things I'm going to be uh, playing around with all the time. But on the whole I'm really happy and after those few teething issues with finding the right card um, it's been great. Uh, it's connected every time, it's printed out. I haven't had any actual product reviews yet because obviously I've only sold two cards. Um, if you would like to buy a card, they are available on my website now, pinkbirdoriginals.com and you're welcome to leave me a review for the small price of 3 75 um, But if I was in a shop and I saw that, I wouldn't think it was printed on a home printer. I think it was just like mass produced somewhere and I sort of buy it without any sort of second thought. So that's my personal opinion. Obviously, I'm a bit biased because it's my product. But that wraps everything up for now. So overall, positive. That's what you can take away from this. And if you'd like to see more of my content, please consider subscribing to my channel as I blog mainly about running a home embroidery business, which now has a little print side venture. Please consider supporting me by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down in the comment section below and I'll answer it as soon as I can. And that's all for today, guys. I'm going to fade now into my little TikTok of me packing my first order. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.